Hey guys, Mr. Short Hitter here. I did videos on breaking 80. I did videos on breaking 90. The one thing I've never done is a how to break 100 video. I know there's a lot of beginner golfers that are watching my channel and I appreciate that. I know there's a lot of golfers who are trying to break 100 for the first time that are watching my channel. So today, I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to break 100. My first tip is we're back on the black tees that I normally play from. You don't wanna do that. Let's move on up to the forward tee box. You need to find a club that you're comfortable hitting off the tee. A club that you're not worried about hitting a big slice over there out of bounds. A lot of golfers that are trying to break 100 do slice the ball. So we need to have a club that we're comfortable with if there happens to be out of bounds or water over to the right. We don't have to hit this club great. We don't have to hit the green in regulation. We just have to hit this club in play as a high handicapper golfer trying to break 100 we've got trees over here that you could easily hit it into so we want to have a club that we're comfortable with i'm going to hit a five hybrid here but maybe for you that might be a seven iron we don't have to hit this green in three shots so i'll hit a five hybrid now as you can see that wasn't a very good shot but the key is you don't have to hit great shots to break 100. You just have to utilize good strategy. Let's get up there. I ended up in the fairway here, even though I miss hit that shot, we've got 137 yards. So one other thing I suggest, you're trying to break 100. You don't need 14 clubs in the bag. You need clubs that you are comfortable with. You don't need 10 yard gaps. You need gaps that you are comfortable with. So we may have, depending on how far you hit it, your driver may go 200 yards. Now you want a club that you can hit 180 would be ideal, but maybe 170, maybe only 160 yards. That'll cover 360 yards. So let's say you have a driver that you can hit 200 yards. Your next club, you can hit 170 yards. Well, that's 370. Now your third club, maybe you've got a 150 yard club, but I think 20 yard gaps are fine. So maybe every other club you have in the bag, you just want some clubs that you are very, very comfortable with hitting. I've got 137 yards here. Let's say I had a 170 yard club, 150 yard club, then 130 yard club. Well, I've got 137. So I would club up, if I were you, and I'd hit the 150-yard club. That's what we'll do. So I'm going to hit a 7-iron. That's a 150-yard club. We're not trying to exactly emulate the shots that I hit. The strategy is the same nonetheless. So let's say this pin is over on the right side of that green. I think as a high handicap, you should aim at the fat part of the green. We're going to give ourselves much more room to work with if we miss the green. So the fat part of the green is the left side. I'm aiming this closer to the left fringe. And did you see what happened there, guys? I miss hit that shot that I'm kind of close to the hole. As a high handicap, you're going to miss more shots than you hit well. That's just an unfortunate reality. Playing away from pins, you're going to give yourself some actual good shots and good putts. Let's get up there. So guys, I want you to think about something. You're trying to break 100. So let's think about that shot that I just hit. Our target was way over here on the left side of the green, the fat side of the green. And you can see how much right that ball is from where I hit it. So as a high handicapper, you're going to miss a lot of shots like that. This is 20 yards wide. So playing to the fat side of the green is going to really be helpful. If I was aiming at this pin, I could have hit this cart path and went out of bounds. Another thing I want you to think about is this putt here is about 20 feet. 20 feet is about the area in which high handicappers start to three putt. We need to really work on our lag putting, but we have to accept that three putts are going to happen. To break 100, you need nine bogeys and nine double bogeys. You don't even need any pars. So three putts will happen. We just don't want four putts to happen. You don't really want to be aggressive. Sometimes people get excited when they've got a, a birdie putt or a, or a putt for par and they end up just ramming it and hitting it past and causing themselves a lot of trouble that they don't need to have. So I'm going to cozy this one down. No matter what your ability is, you can make that putt. You know, I know a lot of golfers are hesitant to move up tees, but if I can do it here playing the gold, people watching, if you're a beginner golfer, you should have no hesitation in moving to the forward tees. There's more than one way to play a golf hole. You're gonna play a lot better if you can get the ball and play off the tee, give yourself a shot at the green, 
because now you're going to be at the green faster versus hitting shots in the trees and having to punch out. There's more than one way to play this game. Now the same seven iron I hit back there, I hit it here. Didn't strike it particularly well, but this is a short hole. It's in play. I can get close to the green with another seven iron if this is my 150 yard club. So guys, this is downhill. We didn't hit that seven iron particularly well. Hole is 300 yards. We've got a, exactly 131 yards to that pin. So I'll hit my 130 yard club. It's a little downhill. So it's possible if it's firm up there, this ball can go a little further. The point is, if you can hit a 150 yard shot off the tee on a short 300 yard hole, you give yourself a shot at the green. Now the green is firm and I went long. So let's go talk about the short game. So guys, this game is about getting it in the hole. I hit a shot there that looked pretty, nice, high, fade. This ball flew about pin high, bounced over the back of the green. So is it more important to hit a nice, high, pretty shot or is it more important to hit the ball in a good position? Although the pin is in the front, this isn't particularly the shot I want you to have to hit if you're a high handicap. I don't want you to have to go over elevations little ridges. I want you to keep the ball lower as much as you can. So guys, I think every golfer needs to have a good idea of their dispersion patterns. As a hunter shooter, you may not have to know exactly. It will pay dividends to go to the range, aim at a target, and kind of see how wide you go left and how wide you go right of that target. That way you know when you can have, like I talked about in the break 90, green light, yellow light, red light system. When is it a go? When is it? something to be cautious of. And when is it a flat out stop? Got people down here hitting balls, I'm afraid they might hit me. So for instance, this hole, we really have a wide area to hit the golf ball in. There are some trees left, but they're not that troublesome. So this would be a it's goal. It's the traffic light system to guide your decision. What's the right shot to take? I would part a little wisdom. Green means go and red means stop. You don't want to hit it out of bounds and have to take a drop. Yeah. Took the right bounce. I'm a proponent of a few different clubs. For this shot here with a good lie, I might just hit a nine iron back in my stance, land it on the green, and let it roll up by the hole. Or I might hit a seven iron, land it in the fringe, and let it roll up by the hole. The shot I play more often than not, even out of the rough in scenarios like this, is a five hybrid. The ball's sitting decent. I can land it in this rough. And not as much is going to go wrong. You just have to develop the touch for it. So if you have a high lofted hybrid, or maybe even a seven wood, it's a shot you might want to consider. I may not hit this shot great, but I have confidence that I'm going to hit a decent shot here. Not a lot can go wrong with that shot when you develop a feel for it. So guys, I'm not gonna say be completely emotionless on the golf course. You wanna enjoy yourself, have fun, but the people that play competitive rounds with me will tell you, you often don't know whether I'm playing great or whether I'm playing horrible because my demeanor on the golf course is not affected by whether this putt goes in or not. I line it up. Hello, slow down, think, be cautious. One shot in the water and you may be nauseous. The strategy might take it from beginner to a winner. Take it from your new friend, Mr. Short. If it didn't go in, it's the same result. The only difference is the score. Too many ups and downs is like a roller coaster on a golf course. It's extremely fatiguing. You can't let the results of a bad shot or a bad hole ruin your day. You know, I get comments if I could hit the ball like that or if I had the timing and rhythm that you have, but that's not the point of these videos. I want you guys to remember that this strategy works. The point is picking smart targets, practicing the right part of your game. All these things are gonna help lower your score. I'm confident in that. As a matter of fact, I've had comments where guys have lowered their scores, four strokes off their handicap, shot their low lowest round, broke 80, broke 90 as a result. If that's you, drop something down in the comment section for me. Let's say 
I'm trying to break 100. I've got a flag there that's about 150 yards away. And this is kind of a forced carry if you try to go directly at the green. So I'm going to look over here and I'm going to shift my attention leftward. There's a cart sign on the left about 15 feet left of the green. Rather than taking a penalty stroke, I would rather hit the ball over that way. And if I miss hit it, I might again be closer to the pin. I might be short or even long. I still have a chip to where I can possibly chip it on the green make a three or really have a good chance of making a four. If I go in the water, it's almost a definite five if I'm a high handicap golfer. So let's go at the card sign over here and see what happens. So that ball is flying directly at the sign and I've got a chip. If I miss hit it and it went right, it would have actually went closer to the hole. Ball actually landed. Right next to the cart sign we were targeting. So again, we're gonna to try to develop some feel here. The key to this shot is recognizing. We've got a big green there. We wanna get this ball close to the hole, of course, but we're trying to take out the bad shots. We're trying to take out the duffs and the miss hits. Not a great shot, but that's going to take out the trouble. Remember, our putting is all about pace. We want to work hard on our speed control. For instance, this putt is only an eight footer, but I've seen people that are struggling to break 100 ram this putt three feet past the hole and miss it coming back. So the most important thing is pace. We missed it, but it went right behind the hole easy tap in. Another key to breaking 100 is avoiding blow up holes. I think I've kind of beaten this point into the ground because I keep hitting this seven iron. And I'm not saying you need to hit a seven iron, but I'm saying you need some clubs on the top end of your bag that you have confidence in that you can hit well. And when you have a tight hole that causes you trouble, you can't be afraid to just kind of lay one out there, 150 yards or 130 yards, especially if it's a 300 yard hole, which you're playing from the forward tees, you should have quite a few of those. So if you have driver on this hole, everything's in play. Out of bounds is in play, trees on the left in play. If I got a seven iron, I can pretty confidently aim this in the center of the fairway and just make a swing. You know, again, I didn't hit it great. It's in the center of the fairway. So guys, I got 141 to that pin. So again, I'm gonna take my 150 yard club, try to make a nice swing at it. Talking about breaking 100. This is a pretty wide area. You have to know your dispersion. If your dispersion is wide, right or left, then you might not wanna aim at the center of this small green. So direction is very important when putting, but I'm gonna say, if you're trying to break 100, your number one thing is going to be pace. It's gonna be a lot easier to miss a putt six feet short or long than six feet right or left. So we're gonna to try to just cozy this one right down there. You can't worry about having a birdie putt. You have to, try to secure those two putts. So we're gonna play one more hole. We're gonna see how many of these tips we can put into action. I'm playing a par four uphill. We're playing it from about 305. I really want you playing forward tees and once you can break 100 and you're hitting the ball a little further, you can move back a tee set. Now, anyone that watched my videos know I really like this high wood. So I'm gonna hit this high wood. I'm comfortable with it. If there's a hole with trees and trouble, you may not wanna hit your driver. Find a club that you feel comfortable that you can get in play. Blue pin in the back, we've got 121 yards. Remember, we've got 170, 150, and 130 yard club. So we're gonna hit our 130 yard club, nine iron. The pin is maybe a little left of center of the green. So I've got a big tree there that is center of the green. I'm gonna aim closer to that tree because if I do happen to miss this green, 
I'd rather miss it right than left because left, you're a little bit closer to the edge. And again, we never want to short side ourselves. We never want to force us to have to hit that high soft shot if we don't have to as a high handicap. A little bit right to the tree. So if I miss this green, I will miss it right of the green. Okay, so we're a little right of the tree. Let me get some sand for this divot. We'll get up there. So guys, we hit our 130 yard club. We had 121 yards uphill a little bit into the breeze. We're just pin high. We've got a putt that's right to left. This is one of those putts, guys. If you are trying to break 100, this putt could easily get away from you. And again, we're allowing for three putts. We're allowing ourselves, if we make three or four three putts in a round, we can still break 100. Remember our pace, and if we don't, can look at some of those lag putting drills from the other video. Thought that putt broke a little more than that. Work on those two footers, work on those three footers. I'm confident that some of these tips will help you break a hundred. Leave down in the comment section, which tips you like the most, which tips you implement in your game. And also let me know when you do break that elusive scoring barrier. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Till next time, Mr. Shore Hitter, out. It's the traffic light system to guide your decision. What's the right shot to take? I would part a little wisdom. Green means go and red means stop. You don't want to hit it out of bounds and have to take a drop. Yellow slow down. Think be cautious. One shot in the water and you may be nauseous. The strategy might take you from beginner to a winner. Take it from your new friend, Mr. Shore Hitter.